the Vancouver Canucks may never win again. And I think I'm starting to find a part of me in my soul that believes that. I don't know. We had made a video talking about Connor Bedard earlier today. You can go ahead and check that out because I feel like it was a very fun video. But the Canucks against the Carolina Hurricanes end up losing yet another one. And it kind of sucks because this was one of these games where it was like, yeah, if you told me, like, you put me to bed five minutes before the game is over. And I wake up the next morning, I eat my cereal, go to school, and then my grade five teacher is like, yeah, I know the Canucks won last night. I would have been like, okay, yeah, cool. That makes sense. Like they were playing well enough to squeak out a win by the hairs of their chinny chin chin. Sure, they didn't win. Of course, they lost 3-2. But the Canucks in this game had a chance. They had multiple chances. And it's unfortunate because you could say that about every game so far side the Buffalo game. They had opportunities and a legitimate percentage chance to win each of those. The Buffalo one feels like it was the only one where the Canucks had no chance based off of their work ethic, their ability in the game, and just the opponent they were facing up against and how they happened to play. But against Columbus, against the Oilers, against Heck, the Carolina Hurricanes here, the Vancouver Canucks, they had opportunities to bounce back, strike, and ultimately take the lead to the point of 60 minutes. They just didn't even have a lead in this one. Unfortunate. It's 3-2 the results here, and sure, while I say that the Canucks had opportunities to win, I definitely don't want to make it seem like they played the perfect game either. Even though they had a chance, they still did have a few defensive lapses, a few... Moments of error that cost the team dearly when it comes to what gets put up on the scoreboard. The first goal of the game is a power play goal. Stop me if you've heard this before, but yeah, the Vancouver Canucks giving up a power play goal. It happened so quickly, too. This was a problem discussed on Sportsnet 650, but for some reason, the Canucks penalty kill is like a coin flip at this point. You get on the PK, you flip a coin, and by the time the coin flip is done, it's either in the net or they're going to kill it off. This one was one of the former, as it's Andrei Svechnikov, who has a beautiful cross-seam pass, cross-crease pass. He's on the right side, he one-times it as a left-handed shot, and unfortunately, no Canuck was boxed in to the point where they were able to block the pass. OEL was committed a little bit too far in towards the goaltender, the other defenseman was on the other side, and then the two forwards for some reason, they were both on the guy who made the pass. So Andrei Svechnikov is all by himself. It's kind of a bad play, I feel, from a positioning standpoint for the Canucks. You could say, oh, it's because they didn't win the faceoff. But then again, you still have to go out there and be able to recover just in case you don't win it, and that's what the Canucks ended up not doing. It's one nothing Vancouver to kick off this game. A few minutes later, the Canucks are hemmed into their own zone, and a clearing attempt is blocked in front by Tanner Pearson. Yeah, I've been waxing poetic about how good this guy is over the past few days, but Pearson blocks a clearing attempt, the Hurricanes keep control, and eventually they score. But this goal is called off because there was goaltender interference, and it's 1-0 still. The Hurricanes challenge the goaltender interference, and eventually it's ruled that the call on the ice stands, which means that the Hurricanes get themselves a penalty. Because of it, it stays 1-0. Vancouver's on the power play. Very nice. And on this power play opportunity, guess what? They actually get themselves a goal, a turnover behind the Hurricanes net. It's Bo who takes it on the side. A backdoor pass to JT Miller. Open net tap-in. It's 1-1. The second period is filled with a few more Vancouver Canucks power play chances, wherein they don't actually do anything. It's very unfortunate to see. There were a few good rushes here and there, though, that I definitely want to acknowledge. Kuzmenko had a really nice rush and shot. There was a big scrum after where the puck didn't go in. There was a few penalties taken by Vancouver as well. Luke Shen went to the box for tripping Andrei Svechnikov, I believe it was. You also had yourselves the... Tyler Myers penalty for hooking, and on these penalty kills, man, Elias Pedersen really showcased his value on the defensive side of the game. His awareness and his anticipation is just so good and polished to the point that he's able to break up power plays and their cycling just by positioning his body and stick perfectly each time. 
The Canucks had themselves some opportunities on the penalty kill to maybe get some extended offensive zone time, but they just kind of elected not to do that. They just wanted to wait it back and steal when the Hurricanes had it in the Canucks zone. And that's most of the second period. There isn't a goal scored here. But guess what? In the third period, there are goals scored and there are goals scored early. The first 52 seconds of the third period, Thatcher Demko makes a save on Seth Jarvis. He thinks the puck is in between his legs. Unfortunately, it's not. And eventually it squeaks out behind him, and Sebastian Ajo was the first guy there. Ajo was on Pedersen. They were each other's checks, but Ajo just kind of slithers off of Pedersen, and Pedersen isn't really there to try to interfere with Ajo before he gets the puck into the net. So it's 2-1 early into the third, and then, just 35 seconds later, it's Stahl who throws it out in front, and it goes off a Jesper Foss skate and in. Kicking motion? Nah, they don't deem it as a kicking motion. In fact, they're not even allowed to even challenge for a kick because it's not an interference or an offside. So, it's 3-1, like a minute or two into the third period, and the Vancouver Canucks have dubbed themselves a hole, as they always seem to do, especially in these third periods, where they always get outscored. It's so wild. Eventually, there's a bad goal scored by Vancouver. Tyler Myers throws it on the backhand into the zone. It goes off a of caught Kanyemi's face, and he's writhing in pain over there. As the puck bounces down onto the ice, it's JT Miller who pounces onto it immediately and one time slaps it down by Freddie Anderson for his second of the night, making it 3-2. Eventually, the Vancouver Canucks pull the goalie. It's the empty net. They don't end up converting, and that's the final score. Unfortunately, this one felt like they could have won it. Like, this was a winnable game. They just needed a few more seconds worth of engagement, I feel, at the start of the third period to prevent those two Fost and Ajo goals. Like, those were just kind of very lackadaisical plays that struck in the span of a few seconds worth of time. All you needed was a few seconds, Carolina, to get onto the board twice, and Vancouver blows it yet again. They may never win a game again, Honestly, though, there was some good coming out of this game. The Diwali sweaters were very nice. I think I want to maybe cut one of those out and make it on the thumbnail of this video. I'm not really too sure if we're going to be able to do that and make it work with the theme, but actually, yeah, no, I think it's kind of okay. The fact that the Vancouver Canucks are losing still, at least it wasn't the Buffalo game. At the very least, they tried a little bit more. And maybe I'm the loser, the biggest loser in all this. Me and all the other Canucks fans saying, yeah, no, they're actually pretty okay. In trying to justify a loss where you go out there and you blow two goals in the span of a minute at the start of the third period because you got off on the wrong foot. It's rinse and repeat with this team, man. I don't know what else there is to say. Was Bruce Boudreaux's Anaheim team in 2015 really this bad? I don't know, man. They had a pretty good team. Getzlav, Perry, John Gibson. Yeah, that was a really good team. Vancouver, I don't really know if they're in that same boat, man. But talk in the comments either way all your thoughts about the game against Carolina. There wasn't really anything else I feel like we could add here other than just the goals and the fact that they lost again because it wasn't abhorrent. This just felt more like a regular loss, not like a team losing like their seventh or eighth game in a row. It felt like just a regular loss, you know? Can you kind of tell the difference in what I'm alluding to there? I'm not really too sure, but you can let me know in the comments either way all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.